What's up guys? My name is Juan and you're watching my channel Blueprint PC. So if you're new here, first of all, welcome. If you're not new here, well then welcome back. In this video today, we're talking about the cooler installation for AM4 socket for the Wraith type ones, the Stealth and then the Spire, not the Prism style. That's for the bigger boys. We'll do that in another video here though coming up. So if you want to see that, hit subscribe. Um, this video is kind of a step back and a redo. I've done a video similar to this before, but it wasn't that great. So I'm kind of redoing it and just updating it. Uh, we're going to go through the basics of the installation of these coolers. And then I'm also going to go into a little bit of a troubleshooting section because I think a lot of you guys are having a similar problem and I want to try to help address that. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get set up and we're going to jump right into it. All right, guys. So I got the motherboard set up here for this one. The processor is already installed. So quick overview of what all needs to happen. So these two brackets right here, we're gonna need to pull those off. These are actually installed because the Wraith Prism Cooler will actually slap right onto these. And again, I'll show an updated video on installing that here in the near future. But we're gonna need to remove these screws and then pull the brackets off. Mind you, don't do it sitting up. You wanna support the back and here's why. On the back of the motherboard, there's this metal plate and you can see where the screws come through that metal plate. It's a reinforcement plate. It helps keep everything supported especially when you're tightening down the cooler to the processor. So you don't want to lose this. And it's a common thing that I've seen happen where a lot of people will do this on a, like, a soft surface and that'll fall out the back. A simple trick you can do is just literally put the motherboard on the motherboard box. It's stiff enough, but it's soft enough where it's not gonna damage anything. Then you can be a little vigorous with it without hurting anything. So let's go ahead, let's do the first step of this process and remove these brackets. You just need a basic Phillips screwdriver. You don't need to be too crazy about, you know, loosening one screw and then loosening the other and thing of that nature on this one. Just unthread them and then you just pull the whole bracket off. Magnetic screwdrivers are helpful, but you don't need to. And by all means, just so you guys know, if you don't know, this is your first build. Uh, magnetic screwdrivers do not carry enough magnetism to really damage anything. I mean, if you stab the motherboard with the screwdriver, that'll damage something but the magnets themselves will not do anything. Brackets are off. So that's step one done. Do not pick up the motherboard, board, the motherboard from this point because that bracket's gonna fall out. If it does, it's not the end of the world. So if you did pick it up or if it moved on you and it fell out, just pick it up, sl slide the bracket in gently. It's not gonna, I mean, again, you don't have to be like using feathers, but just put the bracket back on and then just rest it back down to where you should see the studs coming through the holes there. And then, again, whether it's a Stealth or Spire, you know, whichever cooler you have, these will bolt down the same way. Yours, brand new in the box, will have thermal paste on the bottom. These have both been used and semi-cleaned. This one was just used and never cleaned, but... So now we're gonna install this guy. So it doesn't matter which orientation that you go in the factor of which side of the AMD is going to be on. The AMD is going to be on one of the sides. It will not fit with the AMD vertical like you can read it, which I wish it did because I would love to look at that versus that or that. So, but that's rambling on. So go ahead, carefully mind you, if you have the thermal paste on here, go ahead, just slowly, just place it down and you can move it around. Don't be afraid to, to put a little bit of smudge in the thermal paste. It's not going to kill anything unless you like really smudge it. But get it set down and lined up. All your screws should be touching the studs. And here's the part where I think a lot of people have trouble with. You're gonna wanna do an X shape. So you're gonna do this corner, this corner, and then this corner, and then this corner. Or vice versa, this, then this, and then this, then this. Uh, when you're throwing these in. And you're not gonna thread them in all the way. You're just literally gonna get it touching. Just turn it a couple turns. You should see it pull down a little bit. Start in the opposite corner. And you see it's shifted there, that's okay. Just do a couple turns there. And then this corner, same thing. You're gonna hear some crappy noises, so I apologize. Get that started. Don't mind my screwdriver being a pain there. And then you can apply a little bit of pressure too when you're doing this, just to make sure it stays properly seated. Cause then you're not forcing down the screwdriver, you're just putting the pressure on the cooler itself. So now these are all seated and you can see like I can, pick up the board with that. Once you're here, kind of do the same thing. Just go in the, the X shape pattern and slowly tighten them all down. Turn. 
Sorry for the noise. Boom. And these are all starting to like finally snug up. And they're gonna stop too. Once they bottom out, just don't crank on it. Just make sure it's snug. And that's it. So boom. All four are installed and snug. And that's it. That's the basics of just installing this. The important thing to remember is that X shape pattern because that will cause a lot of problems. So uh, beyond that, that's basically it. The cooler's installed. Again, the only thing from there is if this is a fresh cooler, it'll have thermal paste on it. If it's not a fresh cooler, and like you got this off of a friend that was used, you're gonna have to put thermal paste. There's a whole plethora of thought process on that, so just check the internet for that. I haven't done a video on it because everybody's so critical of the different ways that work. But that's that, and again, same process works for this. So. Now, let's go ahead, let's jump into the troubleshooting and kind of see what I think is going on with a lot of people's issues. I get a lot of comments about you guys having issues where either it, the cooler's tilted or you can't get the screw started, things of that nature, and we're going to kind of just jump into it. So, the first thing with the screws not starting, um, they're tricky a little bit because they are spring-loaded, so if I can get it, you can push up on them a little bit. These are strong screws. So you gotta push against that a little bit. So when you're setting it down, and like I so showed in the first half of this video, you gotta get them lined up. And see like this is being a little finicky. Um, sometimes just a quick rotation, just as, as odd as that seems, just, there you go. So see, it's a little wobbly, but all the screws are touching. So if you're having issues where it doesn't wanna start, if you're pushing on this corner and trying to start this corner, you're actually pulling the screw up. So just try to keep it central pressure. If you have to put a little bit, just push down that screw a little bit. And then like I said, once the threads catch and it starts to pull that side down, go to the opposite corner. Just If you don't go to the opposite corner, you're gonna create problems. And that's kind of what I'm getting into next one. So that's how you help get these started. Just a little bit of screw pressure, hee <laughs> hee, um, and just holding the cooler in place. So the other issue where people get them tilted is you'll thread one side down and now the cooler is all cockeyed and then you literally will be fighting this to get it. And you can force it. I don't recommend it, but you can force it. And instead of forcing it and then being aggressive with your hardware, if you're, watch this. Boop, see how it popped up? crazy. Probably cringy for a lot of people there. But instead of forcing it, what you should do is then unthread this side. If you have to unthread it all the way, just to know you have plenty of slack, so boom, that's unthreaded. All right. So again, just two threads. Boom. And then they're down, they're even. Same thing too, a lot of times, if you tighten both of, on one side, it's gonna bring this whole side up and then you're gonna be fighting it and you don't wanna do that. So, but that's it. I hope this helped for some of you guys out there. Um, outside of that, I'm not sure what other issues there are presently happening. I know these can be finicky. My first time installing them, you, it, they're just, the, the way the screws are is a, is a little quirky, we'll call it, but again, a little bit of pressure on the screws or even just again pushing down the cooler because the coolers are going to have pressure once you tighten it down anyway if you just push down it's going to help seat it better and then you can just start this one and then if your screwdriver is long enough you could start this one then switch sides there you go well, guys, that's it. So if you found this helpful, please hit that like button. If you'd like to see more content or helpful how-to videos and things like that, please hit that subscribe button. Outside of that, guys, I will catch you in the next one.